Hello, hello. You are on the bench, on the bench podcast of Bubba and Pink. How you doing, man? Oh, man, what's up, brother Bubba? What's up, brother Pink? I wanted to call some dedicated Dallas Cowboy fans, man, to give you guys. Oh my God! Two minutes, two minutes or so, man. Just to just give me your best Cowboy. Oh, tell me how you tell me how you feeling. How is your head space? Uh, and what, what no, needs no, to no. Happen? Man, listen to me. Uh, I, I like no lie, man. As a, as a lifelong Cowboys fan, I literally almost gave up. <laughs> almost gave up this year. <laughs> This was the year I said, nope, I'm not doing it again. I'm, you know, because it really is like the abusive husband or, you know, the abusive relationship you're in. And they keep telling you, no, we're different. I'm sorry. I'm going to counseling. And you really believe them. And things go well for a little bit. And then, man, it just beat the hell out you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's how I felt, man. I, I have never been, you know, historically, you can check the records. I have never been a Dak fan. I think he's amazing just in terms of a face of a franchise. He's going to say the right thing, do the right things. But listen, both of you know me as a fierce competitor, right? Yes. There's there's some, there's something he misses that he just does not have, like it, when, when it matters. You know what I mean? And so for us to go in there, 16-game uh, win streak at home, and to not just lose, but to get, like, embarrassed it, it was almost like yo what have you guys been doing on your time off like our game plan wasn't there like green bay you can tell they had a game plan stop tv disrupt that and and, and so it was just more so we're just really uh like what's the word Be, like befuddled like I, I really just was confused on what i was seeing aaron jones adam jones turned into barry sanders <laughs> you know uh, love turned into Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers combined, and it was like we're just wa- watching the total dis- dismantle of a team. And then, and then, and then, Dan Quinn, like, why, why are you playing so soft? Like, they, they just kept dumping. They, they would get eight yards, nine yards every time they threw the ball, and it, and then we made, made no adjustment. So, like, the equivalent is like, you know, we you're playing against a, a team of shooters, and we just been playing zone. And, and and Pink is telling but like Bubba, bro, this zone is not working. We got to get out of it. And Bubba's like, nah, bro, we're gonna figure it out. And nigga just keeps <laughs> splashing your ass. It's like, so I, I feel like today is the first day I am coming out the fog. You know, Bubba, I know your Eagles. You know, look, that 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 was a little bit um, of a little bit of an ease, just because I guess it was it is the first time I can say as fans we were both in solidarity of like we both drop the ball. I mean, because if it was a year to at least get to the to the conference championship, this is it. Like, you know, to beat Tampa or beat Detroit, like, on paper, we should be there, man. So, uh, man, as you can see, it, 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 you're making me relive my trauma. Um, <laughs> now, I'm being dead serious, man. Like, as a Cowboys fan, this year hurt me. Like, man, I, I really was in a dark place, man. Like, I was like, I didn't want to talk to nobody. Legit, like I was like, man, now I'm not gonna watch them no more. Like you know, man, it's, it's, like it's, oh god, it, it was it was def- it was definitely a tough one, man. Definitely a tough one. Well, I, I, we appreciate your time, man. We're gonna my let gosh, you go and get man. back get back to the streets. All oh right? god, man, they we got to drink tonight, <laughs> hey, tonight. Hey, All hey, right, brother, give y'all be good, business, man. <laughs> y'all boys love y'all, man. Y'all my guys, man. Let me peace. Love, love you peace. too, bro. Later. So we're giving some cowboy fans an opportunity to just uh sp- speak their mind. Say their piece. Uh, you may hear some cursing words and things like that. These guys are, are angry and upset. They're lifelong fans here, man. So let's 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 move along to the next one here, man. We've got a, just got a couple more, so you can get an idea of what's going on out here in these cowboy cowboy streets. All right. Hello, hello. You are on the bench on the best podcast of Bubba and Pink. What's going on now? Everything good. All is well. Can't complain. All right, all right. So we're on the phone with with, with Ruthie here. Ruth, we're going to give you just a couple minutes here. Just speak your piece. You're a lifelong Cowboys fan. You guys go hard in the paint for the Cowboys. I know you do. Uh, so and they just... went soft in the playoffs for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hate. The hate. The hate. It's unreal. <laughs> so how you feel about the, the team loss and, and, and where you guys are at, man? Well, the realist in me is, is, is different from the fan in me. The realist in me understands that 
regardless of the every year choke, that there's a chance every year that on any given Sunday, any given Monday, any given Thursday, it could go down. I mean, Green Bay showed us that. I'm not surprised because as a diehard 30-year Cowboy fan, I've seen what we what we do in the, in the postseason. So it's, it's not really surprising. I mean, if anything, this loss was a little bit more embarrassing than previous losses. Because if you look at some of our previous postseasons, you'll see that we ain't never really got blowed out like that. I mean, even with the San Fran bouts the last two or three years, I mean, it's been pretty close situational type football, one possession type game. So to see Green Bay come to our house and kind of punch us in the mouth like that. Kind of? You know, kind so, of about it. Hey, this still, Bobby, this still, this still, Pete, this still, you know, it was a little rough. It, guys, was a little, it was a little rougher than it has been in the past. Yeah. I mean, to choke is one thing. To, to, to fall on the ground foaming at the mouth choke, that's a different kind of thing. So that was a little hard to watch. I mean, again, December and January, for the last 27 years been uh, Achilles heel for us. So I'm not going to pretend like it caught me off guard or nothing like that, but I did expect a little bit more. I mean, this is the most solid defense that we've had in the last few years or whatever. So I kind of thought that they were actually going to put up a fight. And then even if you look at what they said about us all season, they talked about how we played these mediocre teams. I mean, and if we're being totally honest, if you look at the Packers season, that's the definition of a mediocre team. They had some, end of the season kind of like juice flowing and stuff like that so respect to them on that but I mean like name their top receivers like who who played for them <laughs> I mean look at their secondary I mean okay Jair Alexander a little bit you know they got the, 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 the gymnast husband out there a little bit okay <laughs> but I mean who plays for them I mean it's a really a nobody team if anybody was a nobody team this year so I was a little disappointed and it felt like, even though they kind of got a slow offensive start, it felt like the defense was really the part of the team that didn't show up. I mean, them boys couldn't stop a park car. <laughs> couldn't stop a nosebleed. It was like, golly, they just came in and had their way with us. It was unbelievable. I mean, I don't know what else Dallas fans can ask for at this point. I mean, we asked for a more solid defense. We got it. We asked for some juice on the offense. Dak and, and CD had a, a, a pretty good season. I mean, even with the coaching, when you remove Kellen Moore from the picture and you got McCarthy calling the plays, which is what he was doing in Green Bay, it seemed like it was jogging up some success. But when it mattered, James Harden. Sorry, Bubba, that was for you. It was a, it was a choke. It was a choke. It was, a choke it was like, oh, I mean, I don't even know if I expected anything different. I kind of was hoping that, you know, we could kind of cruise to the first round and he'd at least get that first round win like we normally do we couldn't even get that man i mean golly i mean it's still it's still dallas till i die or whatever i know it's a few bandwagoners that don't burn their jerseys but no we're still <laughs> resting over here <laughs> what, what, yeah, what would it take for you to to forsake the cowboys and just go with another team um i don't think that's possible and really? and, I, and i say that i say that as a diehard fan i mean i think the, the people who bounce from team to team I mean, where's your loyalty, really? I mean, let's let's be honest. I was six when they got their last ring, so I did see a little bit of that triplet era with um, Aikman and all of them. So, and then again, my dad is a diehard fan. My grandma was a diehard. So I think it's kind of like in the blood. I mean, I even converted my husband when he came to the family. He became the cowboy. So I'm not sure that they could do anything to make me kind of like walk away. I will say that. I always got a team on standby, you know what I'm saying? So when <laughs> Dallas let me down. I hear that's you know, how you I, ladies operate. <laughs> hey, what's up, Pete? This is Tim. We put our secrets on blast, man. It's a secret. Don't put nobody. I mean, but I don't think that there's – I don't think there's any – I mean, it's been worse than this. If you if you look at our history the last, sure. you know, few years, it's been worse than this in some seasons. So I think when they kind of come back during the season and they kickstart a little juice, they kind of give you a reason to come back. So I'm not sure – that there's anything that they could do. But, I mean, since we're in Texas, let's just go ahead and root for Pastor CJ. You know, okay. keep the Texas dream alive. See if they can go somewhere since Dallas can't do nothing. But, no, it's, <laughs> it's die hard till I die. All right, all right. Well, appreciate your time now, Ruth. I'll catch you. I, absolutely. Y'all boys be easy. Thank, you. Right, nah, thank you. You're on the bench, on the bench podcast with Bubba and Pink. What's going on, my man? Yo, what's up, my guy? What's going How's on? How's it going? We're on the horn with Derek. Derek has actually had – Multiple tweaks to make it onto Undisputed, man. Really? He's a budding star. A budding 
I'm almost there. Almost <laughs> there. <laughs> one, one more tweet. They're going to have to bring me on the show. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> They're going to have to fly your boy out there. <laughs> That's funny. Appreciate you uh, 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 being with us on the show here, man. I, I know you're a diehard Cowboys fan as well. If you just want to give us a, a, a couple of minutes of uh, where you're at uh, with the team and, and what's going on in the Cowboys uh, nation here. I, I mean, we, we heartbroken. I'm not even going to front. We, we heard over here, uh, it, it, it's necessarily, it, you, you, you know, the, the, the definition of insanity when they say, you know, you do something over and over and over and you expect a different result. That's, that, that's what, that's what it's like to be at this exact moment at, at this exact time dealing with what we just dealt with because you, you all saw the game, right? You all saw what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Familiar that, with it. It was depressing for everyone who, is a Dallas Cowboys fan. And the, the funny thing is, a number of Cowboys fans hadn't even been to Dallas. We've never even been to Texas. We're not from Texas. We just, we're just fans left over from 95. And <laughs> See, I was a fan back in 95, but when we saw the cracks in the Switzer regime, I got out of town. The, 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 what was happening the whole time, what really messed everything up was Dallas, in general, was trying to re, reinvent the wheel. And it's like, why do it now when you had the whole strategy that led you 12 wins and, what, 16, 15 games undefeated at home? So, and then they get to Green Bay, and it's like, Green Bay's kryptonite, just like San Francisco is kryptonite. And I don't know what the issue is, but there's there's been a working conspiracy in my head that <laughs> essentially <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are being used to fund – all kinds of terrible things in the world. <laughs> there's no, there's, there's no reason. Mainly bad playoff football. <laughs> Mainly, but you got to look at it like this: they're the number one sports team in the world at nine billion dollars, really? and they ain't pulled nothing off in thirty years. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. just been, they've been getting all our money. They've been getting all our cheers, and then what do they do to produce nothing? But, but we have to watch. You're making huh? a terrific argument to no longer be a Cowboys fan. I mean, you Look, did the, I'm the insanity quote. I mean, I'm heartbroken, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you it's could hard. do something about that. You could change the I, course I, of your I fandom. Could. I could. You would think they would know what to do with it, being you know in the situation with Jerry and all this and all that, and they you get Michael Irvin, you know, yelling at him. You had Jimmy Johnson yelling at him, and then they get in the game. And they forget what's going on. They try and reinvent the wheel. Micah doesn't show up when Micah needs to show up. I can't fully put it all on Dak. Dak walked away with 400 yards. He still threw two picks. But he did everything in his power to keep the team somewhat flourishing. But, damn, he, I mean. He threw early picks. He was trash. The 400 yeah. yards are empty calories. Yeah, exactly. It, it really is. It's, it's like marshmallow fluff. It, it's so it, it's just there. It's sweet, but it ain't gonna get you nowhere. Marshmallow fluff is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's fifty fifty. It's up in the air. But I, I mean, that's this, like a dookie sandwich. <laughs> it's a, it, it feels like a pub sub, but you know, because you know they, they give you all that bread. Like they're always on sale. Like, nah, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm good. But I mean, with, with what they need to do, just in general, I mean, I I wouldn't. Say like get rid of Mike McCarthy right away, not right away because why not? They just, no, because here's here's why. Here's why they just got rid of the offensive coordinator, uh, Kellen Moore, yeah. and this is what they end up producing. So I say give him maybe one more year in that system. Let Dak play out through the end of the contract. Don't don't re renegotiate nothing right now. Play throughout the end of this contract because everything comes up next year, and it, you know. So or basically, hold on, hold on, just hold on, hold on. run it back on, for let, another year. But let me, let me, let me. Uh, we're going to end the call on this, Derek. And I want you to think about this. Mm -hmm. You started the call saying insanity is yes. doing the same thing, and they're going to do it again because that's, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's why they're playing with us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, you keep doing it until something works out, and that's the double. <laughs> it ain't working out. I, I hey, I think Look. I think after listening to you for the last two minutes, that you and the Cowboys are a wonderful match. <laughs> we, we're they're fantastic in a sense, but the only time the only time everyone's going to be involved, literally, it'll be the last minute and a half of the Super Bowl. They're taking the victory formation. And that's the only way everyone's going to turn their 
their, their, their minds on the Cowboys. But until then, no, nothing's going to change. I'm pretty confident my lifetime will pass without that happening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Hey, I appreciate you, Derek. All right? Nah, man, it was a pleasure. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Wood, what's going on? You're on the bench, man. On the bench podcast, Bub and Pink. What's going on now? You know what's going on with y'all fellas, man? Uh, Pink, you're still the best in the business, baby. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wood, man, uh, first of all, uh, what's going on with your phone on silent, man? What, what? Man, my phone not on silent, man. I've been trying to text you. It won't even let my text messages go through to your phone, brother. Okay, it might be on my end. keep giving me the, uh, the little, Did you uh, block the little red something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's going on, man. Bubba might have blocked you, Five what? seconds later, I'm blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, friend, tell me what's happening. <laughs> Wood, man, what's, what's, what's going on with, the, with these Cowboys, man? What's on your mind after the Packers lost? Uh, oh, uh, as a as a lifelong Dallas Cowboys fan, I'm, I'm not shocked. I'm... I'm I'm upset by it. I didn't want to see it happen, but shop now. I mean, you got to think I'm kind of numb to it by now. But, um, no, it's not. See, people, I think people pointing to the wrong thing when they talking about the Dallas Cowboys. They keep asking us, is it, is it a coaching problem? Is it a player personnel problem? Is it a talent problem? It's none of that. Boys ain't got no heart. Well, well, how do you fix that? It, it, it's, I don't care what your record is, how people view you. When somebody walk in your house and keep their shoes on <laughs> after they just been playing out the door and just walk all over your furniture, do kick back flips off your wall, smack your trophies on the ground, wrinkle your school clothes, and you don't have no fight. I'm watching blown assignments. That's not coaching. It's not being prepared mentally. The coach can prepare you physically for this game and give you the mental notes. You have to mentally prepare yourself. 